Hello, people of Earth. It's your pal, the Orbital Outcast, Rad Gnarly, coming your way with another low-key broadcast. Today, we have two more exciting weeks of GWA Trebuchet headed your way. But before I get to that, I'd like to say hello to everybody in chat or checking us out on VOD. No matter who, what, where, when, why, or how you happen to be in this great big old world of ours, we are happy to have you with us. And we hope the day finds you well. I'm just noticing that there's a pause recording button on OBS now. That's fun. I wonder what I can... I wonder what uses I can make out of that. I want to see this like it uh, splits the important betwixt the pauses as we are sped out of the GWA wormhole. Fully formed trebuchet arena here in beautiful downtown. Uh, newly renovated Toronto, Canada. Wonderful. And there will be downtown as well. Assuming we plopped our arena near the other arenas. All right, coming up first, uh, our first three matches, as has been the case uh, on our build to Love Hurts. I'm letting the game book rivalries, and boy, are they ever booking WWE-style rivalries as we're getting the same match over and over again. Uh, especially this one. Billy Eilish, Nicki Minaj. Billy Eilish has thoroughly destroyed Nicki Minaj in every single one of their encounters. I don't know why this match keeps happening, but the rivalry is strong. So let us go. Down to the ring for Billie Eilish and Nicki Minaj. Let me actually double check as we load this one up. Let's see. I'm going to scroll as far back. Okay, so starting at 33, which was the uh, the fallout from Cold Snap. So starting here in G the first week of January. So technically this entire calendar year, Billie Eilish and Nicki Minaj have been feuding. I'm seeing 1-0 and o Billie, 2-0 and o Billie, 3-0 and o Billie. Uh, didn't happen this week. 4 0 Billy. 5 0 Billy. And here we are. <laughs> Billy Eilish is 5 0 against Nicki Minaj. <laughs> Nicki Minaj. Uh, I don't. At this point, just need scraps, something. Maybe a two count. She'll feel better about herself. Who knows? Maybe if, Nikki, if uh, Billy Eilish thinks about submitting, we could call it a moral victory. Nevertheless, the feud persists. Said Nicki Minaj on the losing end of the previous five encounters between these two. Sometimes we throw a little stipulation in there. Uh, actually, I don't think that's true. They haven't even varied it up in terms of stipulation. They literally just booked them in singles matches against each other, and that's what they think a rivalry is. I mean, technically true. Sure. Um, a series of matches against one another. In terms of professional wrestling landscape, yes, that is a rivalry. But I am thoroughly disappointed so far in the lack of variety in how these feuds are going that I'm letting them auto book. Especially involving championships and how many uh, non title matches they get against the champions. Stuff like that. As we're seeing in our other two rivalry matches of the day, which are two tag team contests between the two. Tag Team Champions are the number one contenders. Both non-title matches based on these AI-generated feuds. Don't worry, folks. Once Love Hurts airs, the GWA AI feud experiment will be over. We're checking it out for now. Curiosity card. Not killing this cat. Just helping me book in the waning days of the GWA. Just trying some stuff out. Speaking of trying some stuff out, I have been doing some preliminary research on what will end up being the fifth generation of the GWA. Uh, it will not necessarily be an exclusively live stream proposition. Um, there will be a live stream element to it, but I'm going to actually edit some stuff together present a more complete package for the fifth generation. It might involve more than one uh, video game as well. I might do the backstage stuff in one and the in-ring stuff in another. And I'll leave it to your imagination to uh, try to figure out what games I might be discussing or talking about or referencing or researching or indeed even thinking of as well as the number between one and a bajillion that I'm also thinking of. If anyone gets seven, congrats. You're wrong. 
block. Oh, Nicki Minaj not wrong, feeling oh so right in there against Billie Eilish, looking to pick up her first victory. She has spiked her on her head with his DDT innumerable times in their contests as she slithers into the pin here. But Billie Eilish's feet under the bottom rope, that's going to cause a rope break immediately. Essentially a waste of that DDT because up and over goes Billy with a DDT of her own. Leveling the playing field once again. Longtime opponent. I wouldn't necessarily call it a rival. It's not like Nicki Minaj necessarily has to bring up the best in Billie Eilish in order for Billie Eilish to put her down. More the opposite, that each match seems to bring up more and more of Nicki in an attempt to gather some sort of victory against her most hated foe. Eilish trying to quick cover here. Two and a half. Questions the tempo of the referee's kick. Now into the submission, it's not going to matter. Not going to need to count to three. Look for the tap out victory here. Oh, really wrenching back on Nikki now. Minaj in trouble. Eilish, let's go. Going right back to work on that arm. Both arms, in fact. Really next snap. Shout out to Kurt Henning. As Billie Eilish ascends to the top rope. Oh, great elevation on the leg drop, but nobody home. Minaj now looking for an opening. Stalking her prey, gotta be thinking DDT. The most potent offensive maneuver. Oh, hang on. Submission of her own. By Nikki, look at a tap out, Billy. Oh, Billy, easily, easily able to get out of that thing. Just kind of pulls her arm free. Solid effort by Nikki Minaj. The attempt at a submission there. Here they are trying to tie her up in the ropes, ended up through the ropes. What a professional to continue selling the maneuver. Ends up against the ropes once again. Does Nikki? Will they repeat the spot? Nope, going for something different. Shots to the kidney. Into the cover. What a humiliating defeat this would be. And almost was for Nicki Minaj. But she's able to roll that shoulder before the count of three and the fight continues. Eilish continuing to stalk her prey. Perhaps going for that trailer hitch. Figure four variation. Yeah, look at her. Press that heel into the knee of Nicki Minaj. Nicki in all sorts of trouble. As he's stalking her prey, Nikki slowly back to her feet. Right back down into the arm bar. Billy Eilish showing Nikki how it's done, and that will do it. Eilish taps out Nikki Minaj, becoming a perfect 6 0 against Nikki. What a feud. Okay, we're going to be like post match shenanigans after the uh, replay. Come on, shenanigans. Head down in front. <laughs> Can't quite see that one. I thought that was I thought she was legit gonna beat her after the kidney shots off the ropes and just humiliate her with like the lamest finish ever. But she tapped her out with a submission. So she at least respectfully Billy beat her. And again, this is just a standard end of match victory screen. The feud has done nothing. Okie doke. Oh, there was a three-star, super high intensity rivalry match. Eh. Nikki has an enemy in, wait, what? No, no, that's gotta be Billie Eilish has an enemy in Oprah and tags up with the rest of the, the bad guys. She's currently the number three women's rank. Uh, Billie Eilish, wait, what? Oh, Nicki Minaj here. Not a ranked contender whatsoever. Is that true? Okay. Very interesting. I don't know what those stats are meant to like. Okay, what I'm meant to do with those. Like, especially the star system, because I don't know that it plays into anything in universe mode, because they don't give me attendance figures or like money or anything like that. It just happens. Anywho, I'm curious. No, I'll do it for the next one.
Uh, this one I'll just let lie as is. The next one I'm going to see if I can edit it into a title match and if that ruins the rivalry aspect. You know what? It might ruin the rivalry thing, so I'm just going to leave it alone, to be perfectly honest. I'm just going to let the computer book these th three feuds until the pay-per-view, and, uh, and then we'll see what happens at Love Hurts. By which I mean I'm definitely going to put them in matches against each other that hopefully ends the feuds, but what those matches will be, I have yet to determine. Aha! <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> it's just the music inspired me. Uh, the ladies' men are absolutely contending, and PBS are absolutely defending at the pay-per-view, so let me pencil that in. I have half the pay-per-view booked. Uh, okay, I'm pretty sure Black Order retain uh, until... Oh wait, I don't know that Unbridled Strength are the people that the tag team uh, that the tag team champs are actually feuding with. Hang on. Oh yeah, they are. <laughs> Never mind. It's just that last week, I think, or maybe a few weeks ago, they um, instead faced members of the bad guys, I think. Okay. Versus Black Order. I think I just want to do a straight up tag match for that one. Let's get down to the ring for this, though. Action in the men's tag team division. PBS, the public beatdown squad, the number one contenders. I'm pretty sure they're not the champs. Oh, hang on. Oh, things starting hot and heavy on the floor. Not an official matchup yet. Boy, oh boy. This might just end up being a segment, maybe. Oh, no, it's going to turn into a match right now. There we go. So, not going to be an official match until they return to the ring, but look how quickly they go right back into the ring. Bill Nye on the floor. One on two against the ladies' men. Not an official contest yet. Bill doesn't ring until all four competitors roll into the ring so that they can determine who's legal and who's not. Trapezius hold. And down goes Leatherface. Fred Rogers slides back in. In slides. Michael Myers. We got a legal fighter from either squad in the ring, so the bell goes ding, ding, ding. Double check. I'm pretty sure PBS are your champs. Yes, PBS, your reigning tag team champions. Their heated rivals, the ladies. So PBS put me putting the belt on the line at the pay-per-view. The ladies, man, I'm booking extra, trying to book extra tag matches in the um, tag team division as we get closer, just to maybe drum up a third member of a match, maybe a three-day ladder match, we're thinking. Oh, Rogers sends Myers out to the apron, brings him in the hard way, just batters him down to the canvas. As he ascends to Brett's rope. A black handle. The fallen Myers. Right back to work goes Rogers with that fist drop. You won't find the offense of the public beatdown squad topping any highlight reels. It is not fancy, but it is certainly effective. Rogers is going to weaken his opponent up for that pile driver. Bill Nye, the science guy, employing that DDT hang on. Quick pin attempt at a no count on Myers there. Bill Nye mocking and surprised that there was over that one. I think he just wanted Myers to expend some energy. Hey, what's going on? Hey, how's it going? Hope you're having a great day. Absolutely. What are you indeed going to do when the ladies men, currently represented by Michael Myers and Leatherface in this content, their contest run wild on you. This is a non-title contest. Our reigning champions, PBS, the public beat beatdown squad, currently represented in ring by Bill Nye, the science guy. You can hear the sounds of his tag team partner, Bill Rogers, and Michael Myers' tag team partner, Leatherface, engaging in fisticuffs on the floor. Oh, hang on. Myers are going to put Nye to sleep here. The end may be Nye for Bill. Oh, able to fight his way free with some kidney shots. There you see Rogers scurrying around the ring to get back to the apron. Had to be in a legal position to make a tag to help out his partner. Nicely able to slip out there. Avoid the attack from Myers. Some 
damage to the knee. Oh, big knee lift there. Signature offense from Bill Nye. Very old school mentality from the public beatdown squad, as we said. Rogers got to be thinking pile driver soon. Beautiful standing drop kick. Now dragging Byers away from the ropes. No chance for a rope break here as he hooks the leg. Two. Oh! Surprisingly close fall there. But Myers able to escape before the count of three. Leatherface supremely confident in his partner. Didn't feel he needed to aid in any way. Beautifully executed vertical suplex by Rogers. Has the time and space to tag in his championship partner, Bill Nye, the science guy. The other half of the public beatdown squad. But in a long rivalry here with the ladies' men, it's going to cultivate. Culminate? Cultivate? Culminate. I'm going to culminate at the Love Hurts pay-per-view that we're going to be presenting on the stream next week. This week, we have the last two weekly episodes of GWA Trebuchet as we build up to the pay-per-view next week. What athleticism on display. I mean, normally stoic Michael Myers. And in comes Leatherface. Leatherface! And a knee left of his own. Knight kicks off. Unfortunately for him, Leatherface in the way. Can't tag out. Oh! Smartly done by Nye here. Not only is he applying more techniques, doing more damage to Leatherface, he successfully maneuvered his way around him and is able to tag in his partner, Mr. Rogers. Now they have Leatherface isolated in their corner. Oh, hang on! Pile driver time! Spiked him on his head! Rogers into the cover! Might be too close to the ropes! One, two, but no! Before the count of two, Myers makes the save. Nye couldn't get around the referee. Now how about his partner? Rogers oblivious to the presence of Michael Myers here. Oh, hang on. Oh! Rogers getting a few licks in regardless. Myers was obeying the referee's count and returned to the apron. As the action spills out to the floor. Running Bulldog by Leatherface as you see Myers sturting in the upper right corner of your screen. Standard 10 count applies. Oh, on the floor. Does Leatherface have in mind here? God Rogers up, gonna drop him. Throw first on the guardrail. Oh, Leatherface loving it. As he allows Rogers to return to the ring. Ooh. Nice counter by Rogers in the follow up. Seems Leatherface back to the apron. Gonna bring him in the hard way. Did this to Myers earlier in the matchup. Just clubbers him down to the canvas. That's gonna give both teams time to get fresh faces in the ring. Nye and Myers. Mono y mono. Oh, what a German by Myers. Stalking his prey here. Nicely executed neck breaker. And then right back to work. About the head and neck goes Michael Myers. He loves to choke his opponents out. The finish, hang on here. Myers there able to aid his tag team partner. Oh! That three count. Pays for his efforts, however. What an evasion by Myers! Oh, and then one from Nye! Counter for counter! Nye perhaps taking too long to focus on the crowd's adulation here. Myers able to tag out to Leatherface. Sure on clothesline! That's gonna send Myers to the floor! Oh, hang on, he didn't go all the way out! Nye still hits the DDT. He's got to drag Leatherface away from the ropes if he wants a pin attempt here. There you go. He's going to pivot. Pivot. Drag his man away from the ropes. Rolls him into the cover. 
unfortunately wrong part of town. Michael Myers easily able to, oh my, oh! Helps stop that pin attempt. I thought he was gonna go figure four there. Try quick submission with Myers on the floor. Another high knee lift. Jake Roberts' original finish before he uh, adopted the DDT is a high knee lift. Stop using it in Memphis back in like 80... Ooh. Four? Five? They're on YouTube, folks. Go search them out. Fascinating. Well, it must have been later than 85 then. Maybe 7, 8? Somewhere in there. Elbow drop off the top. Only gets one thanks to the interference of Myers. It's the effective tag team that looks out for your partner. In situations of pin or submission. A nice evasion by nine. A running bulldog. It's going to wisely take out to Rogers here. With Leatherface incapacitated. Oh, they've been playing possum. Oh, Rogers just... I think he just poked him in the eye. They cut him off. Now into the corner they go. Off the ropes. Another Bulldog. Just stepping on the brow of Leatherface. Oh, thought he was going tag. He's going up top. Fred Rogers motioning for Leatherface to stand. Diving fist drop. Into the cover! One, two, three, no! Leatherface kicks out, Michael Myers tried to break it up, but missed! Underneath, as Bill Nye looks on, Fred Rogers alone against the ladies' men, doing just fine, running Bulldog to Michael Myers, that's gonna bust him open underneath the mask! Oh no, actually, sorry, it bled through. Must mean it's makeup or something on the actual character. Meanwhile, Leatherface, with a suplex on Rogers, rolls right back to his feet. Oh, but into a bulldog from Leatherface. Again, Rogers fighting back to his feet. Leatherface can't keep the man down. A tag in Myers. Oh, Rogers has been busted open in that fracas. Oh my, is he ever bleeding? Oh, now he's gonna squeeze the blood from the wound. Wound is Myers. Attempting that side sleeper submission. Field clutch from Michael Myers. I doing his best to save his partner, who looks to be out of it on the canvas at present. Oh, Myers is wailing away now. No time limit in this contest. We must have a winner. Oh, now into the Anaconda Vice. Myers wrenching back. Rogers forced to tap the ladies' men, picking up a huge non title victory. En route to a title opportunity at the pay per view. Love Hoyts. We did not get to uh, license the song from Nazareth, uh, but feel free to sing it at home when we present the pay-per-view next week. Okay, this started with some rivalry stuff. Let's see if it ends Here with some rivalry stuff, because they like jump-started the match. The Legends! The Legends. The Ladies' Men. Not pictured, the third members of the Ladies' Men, Jason Voorhees, on assignment elsewhere. Nope, that's it. They just, they did a good rivalry thing. That was a good one. Um, okay. Enemies, tag team with, yeah. Enemies, tag team with. There, see, you can see Jason in the bottom corner as the third member. Okay. All right, the third of three pre-booked rivalry matches is coming your way. This one. I'm still tempted to maybe make it into a title match to see if it ruins. Ah, again, I don't want to ruin the rivalry aspect. So I'm just going to leave it as is. But Tifa Lockhart and the Bride, unbridled strength, are taking on Gamora and Nebula, your reigning women's tag team champions, the Black Order, a non-title contest, much like our previous uh, tag team. Match, this one also a non-title contest between these two teams, the number one contender for the belts and the champions going into the pay-per-view. Uh, these, of course, would have been spaced out uh, over the show, but when I edit matches, I delete all the deleted all the non-rivalry ones and then custom booked the rest of the card. But 
between Cold Step, which was our December pay-per-view, and Love Hurts, our February pay-per-view, all this in WWE Universe mode, of course. Uh, between those two pay-per-views, I've decided to, or I had decided to let the uh, auto feud uh, thingamahoozits book book some matches for me. So I have a singles ladies feud, and I have two tag feuds going, and um, I'm, you know, we'll see what happens. Are we going to get some story, or is it just going to be a match? Here we go, some story. But is it just going to be the same as last? Yeah, it's the same opening as the last one. Ooh, they're getting a little heated, so they go out to the ring and start outside the ring a little bit first. Yep. So the start of the match is delayed. I don't know what happens if they stay brawling outside the ring for an extended period of time. If the match is eventually thrown out, but they seem to dutifully just return to the ring immediately. So, we'll never know. Ding, ding, ding. Yep, just a match. I wonder if you're supposed to let these feuds bubble for months and months and months in universe mode before you get to, like, decent storyline elements. Honestly, wish it would just let you book them as part of the universe mode. Like, is this a match or is this a, like, promo segment or angle? And then, like, put the people that are involved and, like, pick the template. Because obviously that's what they're doing is they're plugging the characters into a template. And you would just pick the template you wanted. I know they used to have this because they used to have story editor in, the, in some of the older games. I would not be surprised if it somehow made a comeback in the next couple of years. Because if they brought back GM mode and then vastly improved it. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if Create a Story made, a, made an appearance with all the uh, customization people do in Universe Mode. Well, like, look at this. Thanks to the generosity of the Xbox community, I've been able to populate this entire promotion with wacky and wild characters, and then I custom-made an arena and promotion to showcase them. Delightful, and we couldn't be happier to have you strolling down the gnarly wrestling aisle with us. That's right, the GWA is the only professional wrestling promotion, to my knowledge, with three silent letters for its acronym. As Nebula sees action for the first time against the Bride. Bride used to dominating the majority of the offense in her matches. Thrown for a bit of a loop. As the match started on the floor and speed of the floor. She is sent there in a violent manner by Nebula, who's got all the time in the world to tag in Gamora. I guess the referee with his back to that tag just assumed it was legal. I mean, for their sake, it, they are right. It was a legal tag. That always makes me laugh in games like this. Backpack stutter to the bride on the floor. Now, Gamora reset the count by going outside, but that's not stopping her from inflicting more damage. A count at win is a win, like any other. Well, Gamora turning her attention to Tifa. Nope, before thinking better of it. Focusing back on the bride. Try and get back into this thing. Nice! Oh, dear. Bride unable to string a couple of moves together. Excellent strike with that kick, but couldn't follow it up. Still the worst for wear. Sitting at the Black Order's corner here. And neckbreaker. Out of it. Oh, gets cut off. Bride was trying to crawl her way to Tifa to make a tag. Running knee strike. Now she's gonna make that tag. Gamora Days crawling for Nebula. We got fresh fighters on either side. Gamora head to a five to exit the ring. Nice work by the referee. Making sure she left in a timely fashion. Going to work, setting up Nebula in the corner. Up and over she goes, and beautifully done. Setting Nebula three quarters of the way across the ring. Certainly discombobulated. And in comes the bride. Beautiful. Springboard, Asai Moonsault. That unprotected knee strike. Nothing for Nebula but pain. That knee to the face. How bit of a complete shot or downward spiral. Take your pick. 
rolling discus forearm there. Not both. It wasn't a rolling discus. That might be two rotations. If you do a rolling discus. Keith is turn. Out does her partner with an Ase Mutsu off the top. Oh, tries to follow up with the standing shooting star, but Nebula's there with the knees. Gonna try to create an opening here and does so. She's able to get a tag in. Desperately needed that tag. Get the Black Order. Your reigning women's tag team champions here of the GWA. Title's not on the line in this contest. Rivalry heated between the champions and challengers, and so we're gonna try to settle things without the belts being on the line. Something tells me that's not gonna work, and we're gonna have to settle things at the pay-per-view for the gold. I don't know. Something says that may be watching wrestling ever. Kiva marching all the way across the ring. That wrist lock. Nicely done. She's able to take back into her part. Oh, the bride was running at Gamora, but got clocked. Tiva there to save the matchup. Bride may have been momentarily unconscious for that one. Right back of the head goes Gamora. Right, able to counter that one. Sweeps the leg around off the ropes. Springboard forearm strike. Very interesting offense. A lot of high impact strikes from the bride. She tags back out to Tifa. Off the ropes goes Gamora. Double team incoming. Big shoulder tackle from the two members of Unbridled Strength. Bride slides out. Tifa stays in. What you have in mind here? Going up top. Oh! Might not have got all of that, but she rolls into the cover. Nebula breaks it up before the two. Tifa focused on Gamora here. Stalking her prey. Countered! Natural selection! Into the cover goes Gamora! One! Two! Keep out at two. We see Nebula across your screen trying to cut the bride off so she couldn't help her partner. Crowd chatting for tag team wrestling. Always nice to know that they're aware of what they're watching. Able to make a tag out to the bride. But Gamora takes over on offense. Ooh, swats away the standing drop kick. Does the bride bring it back into this thing? Unbridled strength with a title opportunity coming up at Love Hurts. Oh dear! That's part of the high risk of some of those maneuvers as the bride tried that springboard for him again and overshot her target. Gamora going for a pin attempt, wrong part of town, and a rope break. Maybe doing that just to lure Tifa into the ring. Alex instead to tag Nebula into the matchup. Bride starting to stir. Uh -oh. Into the riptide! Too close to the ropes for a pin. Nope. Rolls her over first. Tifa right there to break it up before the Kenna 2, however. So she gets dumped to the floor for her troubles. Oh! What a kick by the bride! One! Two! Almost knocked Nebula out. Gamora nowhere to be seen. Oh, a second one! That could do it! Two! No! Gamora that time makes the save! Superman punch for Gamora! Bright on fire here! Oh, Nebula playing a bit of possum. Back in the corner goes the Bride. That quick tag out to Tifa. 
Got to be looking for the knockout shot here soon. Oh, hang on. Thinks Nebula's worn down enough. Rope break after the one. Oh, referee sees that. Gamora still comes in to make the save. Bride makes her pay for it. Top robot save, Moonsault. Nebula tried to roll out of the way, but ended up taking the Moonsault on her back instead. Oh, avoids the big elbow. Keep it sent up and over by Nebula. I don't even know if Nebula knew that Gamora was there on the ground. Oh, fighting up by the commentation station now as you take a look at our international broadcasters. Those are the ones that broadcast these matches in Simlish for all the people around the world as I handle the English duties. Referee up to five on their count already. Oh, sleeper dropper by Tifa. Going to work on the arm. Referee very generous on that count of six. Getting up there. Maybe the roll's in at eight. If she slides back out, that's going to reset the count for Tifa as well. The punishment continues on the floor. Just staring her down is Nebula. Perhaps trash talking. We can't quite hear from here. Definitely getting her set up for something bad out there. As the referee deep into the count once again. Up to seven. These two content to battle it out here. They're up to eight. Tifa back in before the count of nine. Tags into the bride. Bride, stay in the ring. Stay in the ring. Nine. Maybe this got less than a second to get back into the ring. Ten, that is it. Unbridled strength by count out. Nebula unable to return to the ring. And the number one contenders with a bit of an upset count out victory against the tag team champs. That's not going to stick in their craw. Ahead of the pay-per-view coming up in a couple of weeks here. Here are your winners, the Union. The unbridled strength. Picking up a big win. Yay! A five-star rivalry tag team match of Madu. All right. I do, I think my favorite random mu background music is always the uh, little jazzy numbers. All right, now. This rivalry has also been going on for a while, but it's one that we have cultivated on our own. Uh, Superman's buddies, Batman and Flash Gordon, are once again teaming up with the former multiversal champion, Superman. Uh, the world's finest, they call themselves, as they are taking on three of the four members of the Legion of Doom. We have the Joker, Black Adam, and Venom, who, as we know, crossed out. Well, I mean, we have a sort of open universe policy here, so you don't necessarily have to be DC associated to be part of the Legion of Doom. The leader of the Legion of Doom and current GWA multiversal champion, conspicuous by his absence, Lex Luthor. Not here. We know he has that big title rematch coming up with Superman at Love Hurts. We don't know the stipulations of that match as of yet. We're told Lex Luthor uh, was booked for a public appearance, but should have made uh, had plenty of time to get to the arena to be at least in the corner of the Legion of Doom for this squad. Uh, word is that he's been tied up in some sort of like legal proceedings all afternoon don't know what that's about he was not seen alone there however I know he shares a lawyer with Nicolas Cage and more on that in the main event as we have an unprecedented main event to give you against our better judgment we have been forced to give you a rather interesting main event and we'll get to it as the show progresses. At the midway point, however, we have trios action. This is GWA trios rules, which means it has a 15 minute time limit because a lot of these trios matches will just tend to go on forever unless we set a real world time limit on them. I think we're gonna have Batman and Venom starting us off here. 15 minutes on the clock. Here's the Superman still in his morning attire. Still 
lamenting the loss of his Multiversal Championship. At the Cold Snap pay-per-view, lost a last man standing match to Lex Luthor under somewhat dubious circumstances. Ending the historic reign, Superman, the first ever Multiversal Champion. We're gonna regain that belt, cashing in his automatic rematch clause. Love Hurts pay-per-view. Again, match stipulations to be determined, and I have a sneaking suspicion that's what uh, Lex Luthor is currently negotiating with his legal team. I did say legal proceedings. That could uh, that could merely mean meeting with lawyers from both his side and the side of GWA. As I glance back at the screen, and Batman just burning hammers the Joker, as you do in the opening minute of a match. Just bust out the old burning hammer. Hanging out to Flash Gordon. Who will forget the courageous three-on-one victory that Flash Gordon was able to achieve against this very trios of opponents. One of the most heroic uh, performances in the history of this company. And one of the factors that led to Superman earning, or let's say Lex Luthor honoring Superman's rematch clause, as again, he was tied up with ugh, in litigation trying to get out of it. Settled it in the ring. Challenged Superman's friends to defeat the Legion of Doom on their own. Flash Gordon did it, three on one. The following week, Batman did it, three on one. Through their courageous efforts, Superman retained his title opportunity. And we're gonna see that in the main event of Love Hurts. Broadcast just next week, right here on the old stream of As in comes the former Multiversal Champion, Superman. Had a singles contest in recent weeks against Venom. It's one and one against him, because he lost the first contest, won the second. Hasn't quite been the same since that loss to Joker. In fact, disappeared for a few weeks and then came back with his new all-black look. As we said, currently in mourning. I suppose are still in mourning. His title reign. See if Sunny Day's return to the life of Superman. At the conclusion of the next pay-per-view, it's going to be his only contractually obligated rematch. So for the duration of Lex Luthor's title reign, should Superman be unsuccessful at the pay-per-view, he is no longer eligible to dethrone the man. It is one and only chance. Every championship contract here in the GWA, you're the challengers, or excuse me, the ex champions do get a contractually obligated rematch, but only one for the duration of their the new champion's reign, however long that may last. Of course, things were set when the championship reigns were set. And now Batman's in there with Black Adam. You might notice similar move sets to some of these uh, competitors. Each wrestler, uh, each created wrestler, has a real-life wrestler's move set. Uh, mostly due to the fact that when they came, w when they were downloaded, they didn't uh, venture too far from the default move sets in a lot of cases. So I would have, you know, 60, 70 different edits on in motion, but you'd see maybe five different six or five or six different sets of moves. At least in this case, everyone has a unique move set in terms of uh, being a creator wrestler, because no two creator wrestlers have the same move set. Each one has an individual move set normally assigned to a real world wrestler. And it's kind of fun to figure out who's who. If you're a viewer, or I could just spoil things. I mean, let's say, for example, you're trying to figure out who Black Adam wrestles like. I would assume. I mean, I would think, I would surmise, in this particular case, it's going to be pretty obvious uh, what sort of moveset Black Adam has. Oh, hang on, Superman. Got one in the chamber, loading up on Venom. Have a boobale, blame! Faster than a speeding bullet into the chest of Venom. Into the pin. Two. Strong kick at two. Superman adjusts his hair. Tags out to Flash Gordon. 
That was a signature maneuver for Superman, so he has a finisher charge. He just elected not to use it. Just tag out instead. He's got a finish in reserve. Just chilling. Tag out to the Joker, the man who tapped out to both Flash Gordon and Batman in two consecutive weeks. He is solely the reason that Superman's rematch clause was upheld in those two three-on-one handicap matches. He was on the losing end for the Legion of Doom in both of those instances. Tapped out, laughing while he did it. Did the Joker. Just forearm shot to the back of Joker's head. As the clock continues to tick down here, under 10 minutes remaining in this 15 minute time limited trios match. Here in the middle of our first of two episodes of Trebuchet for the day. Oh, Joker busted open on that turnbuckle and sent out bodily. The big old Bulldog into the cover. Bet him right there. He'll step on Flash and break the pin after the one. Into the sleeper. Just discards. Oh, hang on. Oh, I thought he was going to throw him out of the ring. Then he'll be able to counter. It's going to give Joker some time to recover here. Also, Flash wasted his finish on Venom because his finish is the sleeper hold. Oh, fight spilling out of the floor. It's exactly where Joker likes it. Deep into the count once again, and we're gonna have two count outs in a row. Eight. We're up to eight. Nine. Flash hanging out to Superman. Joker up at nine, he's not even standing. We're gonna have two count outs in a row as the world's finest defeat the Legion of Doom in somewhat embarrassing fashion, I gotta be honest. Who's not anticipating this, mind you, uh, Joker's been counted out in trios matches before. Finds new and interesting ways to lose, does the Clown Prince of Crime. Yeah, you tell him, Angry Duck. What's going on, Rasco? How you feeling today? Hope you're having a good one. Let me take a look at some of the highlights here. Yeah, there's the highlight of the Joker about to be counted out. Here he is, getting bounced off the post, and that's what did it. Knocked him smooth out. Yeah. And we're going to see the end of the matchup, and there you go. Here are your winners. Count of 10. Oh, yeah. Look how happy they are about it, too. Like they just won the titles. Woo. All right. Not quite the contest we were expecting, but hey, the match ended. It had a finish. Okay, we have a, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we have a uh, qualifier for the Elimination Chamber match coming up at the pay-per-view for the GWA World's Women's Championship. Uh, Wonder Woman is putting the title on the line, and let me tell you the other qualifiers. So far, Red Sonia, Ariana Grande, Queen Elizabeth II, and Mystique have all qualified. Coming up here, yeah, <laughs> Rasco, yeah, not trying to bury the lead here, but we have a new roster member debuting tonight with an opportunity to qualify for that matchup as we welcome the chicken lady to the GWA. She takes on Laura Croft and Chun Li. Yeah, um, the 2K22 servers were shut down uh, early this new year. And uh, before that happened, I made a couple of changes to the GWA roster. Just a couple, just nothing huge. Just a couple, like I had a couple females I wasn't using that often. So I swapped them out and I had, uh, well, no, actually I, I, well, number one, I deleted the rad gnarly 
so I didn't have a Rad Gnarly save anymore, so I replaced Rad Gnarly with the Chicken Lady and just put her on the roster. But in addition to the Chicken Lady, there's another new member of the women's roster. We're going to debut her next week. And there's also a new member of the men's roster that we're also going to debut next week. I just forgot to factor them into plans for the day. Uh, we are instead going to go ahead and get down to this multimedia qualifier. The winner of this one, as we said, gets the last spot in the Elimination Chamber matchup. And a shot of the GWA women's title. There you see the chicken lady in all her glory, standing all of six foot three. A fantastic edit. They did a pretty good job with the chicken lady, I must say. Um, I did tweak, I, I built her beak. I did that. Like her beak was a different color before, and then I made it the, I made it yellow. So I tweaked a couple of things. But like 95, 98% of it is as is. I do not remember whose moveset she acquired. I hope I, I hope I gave her a chicken wing as a finish. That's all I hope. I'm pretty sure I did because that sounds like me. First pinfall or submission wins this one and joins the field in the elimination chamber at Love Hurts for the World Women's Championship. No count outs, no disqualifications, first pin pinfall or submission, any way you can earn it. Laura Croft and Chun Li have at least shared a locker room here in the GWA for many months now. This is both of their first look and ours as well at the Chicken League. But over she goes. It even looks like they textured her under things to look like feathers. Oh, spike with a DDT. That can't feel too good. Oh, to either opponent. Chen Li in firm command here. Oh dear. Chicken Lady thrown up and over to the floor. That's going to isolate Chun Li and Laura Croft in a one on one contest. That's what you need to do. Neutralize that third party and focus on the remaining opponent. Take him down and out. Oh no, the Chicken Lady! <laughs> Starting to taunt. <laughs> All right, she at least taunts like a. Float over, escaping the suplexes. Chicken Lady into the German. Oh. My Chicken Lady. Oh. Okay. My sister is still terrified of this character. It was very young when they first appeared on Kids in the Hall. Still does not like. Oh, hang on. What's going on here? Pulls her into a triangle choke. Chen Li breaking it up. It is first pinner submission. Chen Li coming to the aid of Chicken Lady. Gets a snap suplex for helping. Six out of one. Hang on. The chicken lady sends Laura Croft to the floor. Chun Li distracted. Chicken lady looking to take advantage. Double armed. Oh, face first. The hell was that? It might be victory for the chicken lady. No, out at two. Holding the face buster across the knee somehow. Spinning. Oh, side out, boss man slam, Laura Croft taking her down, humiliating her with that amateur style. Into the knee strike, the unprotected knee strike to the face. Chun Li breaking it up immediately, Chicken Lady needs a moment. Crowd not behind Laura Croft, started as a fan favorite. 
eons ago. She turned on the crowd when she says the crowd turned on her. Ain't it always the way? Oh, Chun Li back and forth with those rapid fire kicks. Signature offense from Chun Li may have knocked her out. Pulls her back to her feet for more. Oh, Chicken Lady rolling into the ring. Got her out of the way. An electric chair to Laura. Chicken Lady turns her attention to Chun Li. Alley up to Chun Li. Pulls her back to her feet. Scoops her up. Gorilla Press just drops her down. Chicken Lady now on Laura. Double under hook, face buster. Into the cover. One, two, no. Out of two, I'm gonna call that move the Coupe de Gras, like a chicken coop. The Coupe de Gras. Oh, Chen Li fights free into a reverse DDT. Luckily, she did that. I think Chicken Lady was going to pitch her over the ropes to the floor. As Laura Cross slowly starting to stir. Chen Li, meanwhile, in the ring. We're going to tap Chicken Lady out. Oh, Laura Croft breaks it up with a well placed kick. What a debut for Chicken Lady here. It's two seasoned veterans of the GWA scene, Laura Croft and Chun Li. Match isn't over yet. One. Two, Laura Croft, no! Had a clear path to victory, but Chun Li kicked out at two. Chicken Lady was in no position to help. Laura Croft, once again, dispatching of the Chicken Lady. Sent out to the floor, into the elevator! One, two! The final entrant in the chamber. With the field complete, we now know Wonder Woman will be putting the world women's title on the line against Red Sonia, Ariana Grande, Queen Elizabeth II, the first winner, women's Laura champion, Mystique, and Croft. your winner tonight, Laura Croft. I don't mind talking over our ring announcer because he's the worst in the game. He doesn't quite know their names. Okay. Laura Croft, your winner. Excuse me. Well, this plays out longer than normal. Oh, it turned into a potential rivalry. That's nice. Okay, entrance is off for this one. Tag team division action once again in our semi-main event. As Miyagi Fang of Daniel LaRusso and Johnny Lawrence with Mr. Miyagi in their corner are taking on the High Rollers. That's the dude and Walter Sobchak. As we're drumming up some extra interest in the men's tag team division as it looks like we're going to be presenting a tag team triple threat ladder match for the belts. So that's definitely going to be PBS and ladies men, but I'm just sort of Taking a look at some of the other tag teams in our ranks to, to try to get a feel for who I want to put in in that third position. I don't know if it's necessarily a victory or like a spectacular performance that's going to sway me, but that's just me being transparent as the booker. All right, Daniel LaRusso and the dude starting things off here and we are underway. the dude would love those tag team championship gold as it would really tie the room together back at his place but if not he will abide I think Walter wants to win the belts just to stick it to Donnie for whatever reason Now, oh, I thought he was going slingshot shot suplex. Instead, he just deposits him on the top ropes. We can't defend himself from those knee strikes. 
LaRusso into the floor, and the dude now turns his attention to Johnny Lawrence. It's an usually violent side of the dude shown so far tonight in this tag team contest as he now rolls out to the floor. I think he was keen on taking on both members of Miyagi Fang on his own. LaRusso out on the apron. Oh! Gonna send it to the floor back first. Dude constantly distracted by his partner though, but it's it's paying off as he keeps neutralizing Johnny Lawrence on the on the side of Miyagi Fang, much to the chagrin of Mr. Miyagi on the floor. Now up and over goes the dude again. Had a lot of outside the ring activity on this episode of Trebuchet. Will the trend continue in this tag team contest in our semi-main event? Now two count outs tonight. Are we gonna get a hat trick? Three. Never in the history of GWA Trebuchet have there been two count outs on a show. That's a fact, look it up. Four. We've had time limit draws. We've had double count outs. We've never had two matches won by count out in the same show. Until tonight. Driver to the dude from Daniel LaRusso. Decides after the pile driver to slow things down and work on the arm. Here comes Johnny, seeing his first actual action of the match. His first legal activity in the match. So far, he's just been getting it handed to him by the dude. Time for a bit of revenge. He's got him in a, and out of the corner. Body slams him down. What's he thinking here? That is going for a move out of, uh, out of the corner, off the ropes or something, but... Oh! We're gonna smack the sunglasses off the dude's face, and I gotta tell you, best of luck. I don't know how he does it. Those things seem permanently affixed. Looks like those sandals. I mean, the sandals, you can tell, are easily strapped on, but I have no idea how he's keeping the sunglasses on, unless he's got a band or something that goes around the back of his head that nobody can see that's hidden by his hair. Lawrence starting to feel it here. Combination of strikes, putting the dude down, and two, not out yet. As Walter Sobchak grumpily looks on from the corner. Dude taking Lawrence down now. Oh, what a kick. Thinks he has him dazed. Try to ride him out. What is this? The dude lock. Let's call it. Johnny Lawrence able to break free. Soap trick neutralizing Daniel LaRusso in the meantime. Fight continues. I think dude was going for a tag there. Johnny cut him off. Drops him down with a sleeper. Dude crawling the wrong way. Walter screaming at him to turn around. Eventually does so. Walter gets the tag in. Back in comes Daniel LaRusso. Trying to get a measure, measure of revenge for the attack he's just suffered. The hands of Sobchak. Let's see how he does against the larger, more powerful man on the side of the high rollers. You can see that power coming into effect. As he's tossed away from Sobchak is LaRusso. Once again, just bodily moved aside by Sobchak. He's got LaRusso up and a fireman's carry and drops him face first across the turnbuckle. Snake eyes down. Now that kick in the midsection may have been a little low there, ref. As you see the dude finally making his way back to the apron. And so LaRusso is once again sent to the floor. Standard rules apply. Can outs, disqualifications, pinfalls, submissions. There is no count, or excuse me, no time limit in this match, however. There must be a decision. There must be a winner and a loser. Oh, God! Saito, murder-style backdrop to Daniel LaRusso. Oh. And then the Texas Tornado Punch by Walter Sobchak.
Larusa looks down and out. New looking to wrap him up here. Right back into that submission. Larusa in trouble. Stop check. Cut off by Johnny Lawrence. Oh, but then Walter stops him from helping his friend. Daniel in trouble. Dude eventually lets go. Gonna try to pin him instead. Out of these. Put a lot of pressure on the joints and worn him out. Larusa able to kick it too. Dude right back to work. Meanwhile, outside the ring, in front of Mr. Miyagi. Sob check with a big slam to Johnny Lawrence. Mr. Miyagi stoic, motionless on the floor. Too focused on Daniel son in the ring. You know, Johnny son getting, getting handed to him by Sob check. And he picks the leg. Floats around. Johnny Lawrence down and out. You can see the damage done. It's LaRusso priming something here against the dude. Oh, gets thrown off. I think he's going for that running blockbuster. But the dude tosses him aside. In comes Sobchak. Big spine buster. Into the cover. One, two. Johnny Lawrence saves it. Dude's all up in Johnny Lawrence's face. He goes out to the floor. Larissa tries to get in the dude's business. Up and over goes the dude. We're down to Sobchak and Larusso. Oh, Gord Buster. Knee strike. It's dragon screw by Larusso. Trying to take advantage while both partners are down. Hear him fighting on the floor, maybe. Yeah, hear him fighting on the floor. Walter's well, got Larusso up. Snake eyes. Perhaps a stun gun if you're nasty. Center of the ring. Two, three high rollers. Get the victory off the stun gun. Take a look at some of the action early in this one. Near fall. Smack, smack, smack. Submission. Uh, submission again in the background there. What do we got? Are they going to show me what Walter actually did? Oh, no, we're going to get near fall out of the submission. And then it's just going to cut to the end. Blam! Spine bus. Here are your winners. Sure. Close. It's the high rollers. Not even good enough for potential rivalry. All right, it's finally time for the main event, the first of two episodes of Trevor Shea this week, and your eyes do not deceive you. This is a singles contest for the GWA Multimedia Championship. As we told you earlier in the program, Lex Luthor and Nicolas Cage share the same team of lawyers. It's suspected that Lex Luthor, in fact, bankrolled this. Uh, Nicholas Cage gets his mandatory rematch against new champion Gordon Ramsay. Normally, the Multimedia Championship is only defended in, uh, at minimum, three-way matches. You must defend against a minimum of two opponents. However, Nicholas Cage had an issue with the fact that he, uh, I think he either kicked out or his, uh, there was a rope break involved in the deciding pinfall of the last match where he should not, he should not have counted. So he somehow railroaded that into a lawyer's demand um, for various certain match stipulations that the championship committee has agreed upon for the first and only time the GWA Multimedia Championship will be defended in a one-on-one -on -one contest. The stipulation instead is that it is a two out of three falls match and they each have a corner man. Joining Nicolas Cage is fellow Hollywood and violence member Bolo Young. And at the side of Gordon Ramsay is his fellow reality check member, Dr. Phil. So entrances are on for this one as it is a title fight and a main event at that. Nicolas Cage looking to win back the Multimedia Championship against Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay, a two-time 
multimedia champion at present. As we get ready for the entrances for this one. And then, of course, following this, I will be booking week 40 of Trebuchet, and then we're going to be running that. Ah, <sighs> the other half of it, yeah. I gotta, I gotta, making notes to, like, I gotta debut some peeps here. Uh, for example... They get a debut... One other. Okay. Just making notes. Oh, I see we're loaded up. Okay, let's get to the entrances for our main event for the Multimedia Championship. Somehow the championship committee was satisfied. The following contest oh, hang on. is a two out of three falls match. It is for the Super Hardcore Internet Television Championship. Oh, that's fun. So a one-on-one -on -one match of this caliber, even though he's coming out with like a corner man and stuff, that should get an in-ring intro at the end there. Representing Hollywood and violence. There you see Bolo Young in the front. And his man, the man with the title shot here tonight, Nicolas Cage behind him. Come on, let's go! They're gonna do uh, in-ring intros so I can skip the rest of their walk down to the ring itself. Cage is raring to go. Former champ himself, looking to get the belt back to unseat a two-time champion in Gordon Ramsay. Should be making his way to the ring soon here. Accompanied by, by Dr. Phil. There they are in all their glory. Shake, shake, shake. at the Vaude Villains entrance. Now we can see uh, that beautiful multimedia championship belt. For grabs in this one. Introducing the challenger from wherever he wants. Weighing in at 186 pounds, Nicholas K. G. And introducing the champion from England, weighing in at 212 pounds, he is the Super Hardcore Internet Television Champion. Look at him soaking it Gordon in. Randy. All right, Nicholas KG and Gordon Randy, according to our ring announcer. There it is in all its glory, that beautiful GWA Multimedia Championship on the line in this one. Oh, Tracer, we'll see. Uh, Gordon Ramsay was the one that won the belt off of uh, Cage when he was champion. I don't remember if he actually pinned Cage to do it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, there was a controversy where there was a rope break or something involved. Uh, three shouldn't have counted. Or perhaps a double pin. Oh, it might have been a double pin. Where there were two pinfalls at the same time. You'll have to forgive me. It was, an, it was a couple of weeks ago that I actually broadcast. But I know there was controversy for sure. And he absolutely could not handle the British Nightmare Chef on his own. <laughs> You're not wrong. Cage finally got a taste of gold after that long extended feud with the soldiers, excuse me, the uh, Soul Bros, headed by Chuck Norris. Yeah. We're engaged with the war with Hollywood and violence for ages in the GWA. Nicholas Cage most famously was one of the runners up for the Multiversal Championship when we had our 
inaugural Gold Rush tournament to crown the first champion. That was the closest he got to Golden before winning the Multimedia Championship. Would love to get that belt back, and in order to do so, he has to defeat reigning champion Gordon Ramsay twice before Gordon Ramsay can beat him twice. Two out of three countouts and disqualifications are in effect, I do believe. I might be wrong as I don't see any counting yet. We might be no DQ here. Let me double check on the rule set real quick. I'm also bringing this up because I needed to... Let me check this. So two to three falls. Uh, we have... DQ is off. There is no count. Oh, yep. So anything goes, you must pin or submit your opponent twice. Uh, let me do this real quick so we can keep track. There, I'm going to put the HUD on just so we can keep track of who has points. Not that, you know, there's only two of them, but... There, state-of-the-art technology with the implanted health trackers and all of our athletes here. Oh, Brain Buster on the floor to cage. Thanks to that proprietary health tracking technology, you can take a look at the cumulative damage done to the various body parts of our athletes here. A relatively painless procedure that is entirely voluntary. It's kind of like the size of a grain of rice in the back of your neck, like you're getting your pet chipped. <laughs> Somehow grants us access to all their health statistics. Okay, just getting a bit of a breather against the guard ray heel here, able to lure Gordon Ramsay in. You can see Gordon so far much the worse for wear in this contest, despite no falls having occurred. Standing moonsault on the floor by Ramsey. Impressive athleticism. Boggles my mind how our competitors can fight in outfits like this. Yes. Suit coats and whatnot that you think would be restrictive, and that they're still able to perform some of the most dazzling moves I've ever seen. It's all Ramsey on the floor here. No count out, no DQ. This man is a corner man. Don't know exactly what for then. If there's no DQ, then there should be no danger of the tournament being ejected, so they should just be able to fight, like, the whole time. Cage getting a bit of space now. We'll try to return the fight to the ring, perhaps. Or at least get back in the ring where his fans can see him. Oh, no. Right back out to the floor goes Nicolas Cage. All business. Right back on the attack of Gordon Ramsay, just swinging wildly at the current multimedia champion. Desperate to get his belt back. His cage. So desperate, he somehow managed to get his lawyers involved. And they granted this one-on-one -on -one rematch. The only time the multimedia championship has been defended against a single opponent. This caveat of it being a two to three falls match was enough for the championship committee to grant this, or perhaps they were just tired of the harassing phone calls. Oh, what a knee strike from Cage! This can do it! One, two! Oh, ho, ho! Barely able to kick out his Ramsey. Cage has further violence on his mind as he drags his lifeless opponent into the center of the ring. Into the figure four goes Cage. <laughs> Appreciate you. That's fun. A little Hulk Hogan in the chat. Nothing wrong with Hulk Hogan the character. A human being, not my face. Nothing wrong with the character. Oh no, Billy Goat's cursed by Gordon Ramsay. And hang out with Colt. Can't even fight free. Oh, and serve up a helping of soul food. Ramsay forced to eat defeat. Cage right back on the attack, however. Both men looking for that first of two falls. Yeah, nothing wrong with the character. Let me put that out. 
Oh, and there's the first of two. Cage with the first. Yeah, nothing wrong with the character. Let's get that out <laughs> in bold writing. Yep, nothing wrong with the character. The human being portraying the character, maybe not the best. But whatever. Gordon Ramsay somehow got their chest back to orange, but it's not going to help because they just got their face kicked off by Cage. He's going to go two in a row, and just like that, regains the belt. Look at the smug satisfaction on his face as he wipes the floor with Ramsey. In what the international broadcasters are calling a huge upset. My word. Now again, because Ramsey lost the belt, he will be factored into a, an eventual rematch. So expect these two to be part of a multi-person match for the multimedia championship at the Love Hurts pay-per-view. And I'm not only saying that because I'm currently writing that down <laughs> for the pay-per-view. <laughs> okay, so it looks like Nicolas Cage, now a two-time multimedia champion, is going to be facing Gordon Ramsay for sure. And potentially, I mean, definitely others. I'm going to go at least two more. So let me put, it's going to be a four corners match at the pay-per-view. We'll figure that out. Uh, multimedia is kind of the hot potato belt anyway. I don't know what this music is in the background. There we go. <laughs> That's the danger of just picking whatever. All right. So that is going to do it for tonight's show. It's going to the next one. We're not really part of SmackDown or anything like that. We don't watch Elimination Chamber. So we are going to skip forward to next week. The GWA show here. Okay. So in service of booking tonight's show, uh, we're going to go with the... Uh, matches as presented and anything that's marked rivalry match we're going to leave as is because we're letting them book the three rivalries and then we're filling out the rest of the card basically yeah honestly uh, I did not expect that to go especially after the first fall into the second I did not expect that to go that quickly and I did not expect that to go Nicolas Cage's way because generally speaking like once somebody is like of a point where they're like getting the championship and stuff they, they tend to keep it up keep them on a bit of a hot streak but uh we're going to delete all the matches that aren't rivalry matches so this one technically involves dr strange but you know it's going to somehow involve the ladies men because pbs is uh, feuding with the ladies men so we're going to delete this and this and this and this so once again Nicki minaj and billy eilish are going to face each other uh one-on-one -on -one, gamora versus the bride with nebula in the bride's corner sure let's do that that's true. I do have it on Legend difficulty. That's true. Does that affect, like, would that affect, um, if I turned it down, would that, like, make the matches more entertaining? Because I, I just assume if they're, if it's on Legend difficulty, AI versus AI, then they're just going to go at it as hard as possible, basically. You know what I mean? Okay. So we have Mr. Rogers. So these first three rivalry matches, I'm letting the computer auto book just to see what they do. My first foray into auto-booked feuds. So far, I'm not too keen on them. Especially the fact that Billie Eilish is about to face Nicki Minaj for the seventh week. And uh, Nicki Minaj hasn't won at all. <laughs> they won a single contest. But they keep booking it. With no change. Okay, and then the third one, also a rivalry match. is going to be Gamora versus the Bride. But it looks like Nebula is in the bride's corner with Nebula question mark. Yeah, I did. I did like um, some research on quote unquote more realistic AI settings, and I, I, you know, I did a couple of a uh, couple of tweaks that way before I started this journey eons like ages and ages ago. Because I've also done like a um, a run in GM mode where I booked and watched all the matches and 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 so on and so forth. Um, if you have any like specific uh, uh, suggestions or whatever, uh, don't hesitate to DM me. If you have like a, a web page or something that you're like, hey, check this out. This has a bunch of different sort of uh, my I'm hesitant to call them builds, but you know what I mean? Like different sort of, hey, if you want them to like a WCW style match is more of these type of settings or a WWE style matches or these type of settings or da 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 da. I don't know that it goes into that type of difficult or that type of detail, but yeah, I'm always uh, I'm always happy to learn new things. 
especially as it relates to having fun in my wrestling game. Okay, we have a couple people to debut tonight. How are we going to do this? All right, so let's do... We got the three rivalry matches to start us off. We're going to just do a regular one-on-one -on -one match to debut our new fighter in the men's division. So let's just do this. And we're going to pick... Uh, oh, I know. We're going to pick... <laughs> we're going to fight Mahatma Gandhi in their first matchup. Coming up against Gandhi is our new fighter. You know him. You love him, or at least he hopes you do. He at least loves himself. All the way from Ultimate Muscle, Dick Dick Van Dick. Welcome to the GWA. Welcome, Dick Dick. I'm preemptively turning entrances off. It's not really going to matter once I save the show, but... All right, so T Dick Dick Van Dick debuting for the company. <laughs> Makes me laugh. Uh, we're going to do another tag team match here. Just a straight up tag in our men's division. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Ooh, who did I book here? Pants. Okay, so that's. Oops. Custom. We have tons and tons of custom stars, including Vincent Vega and Jules Winfield. The Bamps! The badass MFs. Take it, we're going to take on the Soldiers of Fortune here. Okay. Soldiers of Fortune. T-800 and his partner Rambo. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Two more matches to book. Okay, match number six. I'm going to do another singles contest to debut our fighter in the women's division. So we have a new fighter. Let's see, who do they want to fight? Sure, they can fight Yolandi. I'm going to take on a new fighter in the women's division. Cruella Deville is in the GWA. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to book our main event, which is a preview of the women's chamber match. It's going to be a uh, GWA trios match featuring all six competitors that are going to be in the Elimination Chamber match for the women. Okay, put that there. Yolandi. Bisser. Versus Cruella de Vil. Cruella de Vil. Oh, hey, Nightbot. Every once in a while, Nightbot wakes up if people are active in chat. Nice to see you, buddy. Uh, like an elimination six man? Hmm. That would I would have, but honestly, those things could take forever. Uh, <laughs> I was actually anticipating the last trios match that we were doing to take the full fifteen, which is why we had the uh, we had that instituted in the first place, because so many of our trios matches just went either forever or they go the full time limit. We'll see though. We shall see how this thing shakes out. I have a feeling with these competitors, we're going to see a finish, but it's not going to be a count up one. It's just going to be one of those things where one team wipes out the other. So we're going to have Grande, Red Sonia, and our women's world champion, Wonder Woman, on one side. And on the other side of the equation, we have Queenie, Queen Elizabeth II. We have the inaugural women's champion here in the GWA, looking to get back on top of the mountain. Uh, where are you? Mystique. And rounding out the woman who just qualified on the last show, Laura Croft. Cleaned up, not default dirty uh, bloody version. Cleaned up. There we go. And that's our main event. Under GW, is it GW? Yeah, GW Trio's rules. So it has that 15 minute counter. So just in case this thing just keeps going and going, it has got that 15 minute cutoff. All right, no title fights this time. But we have all sorts of rivalry matches and some, and some debuts. 
Honestly, uh, these could have been switched in terms of uh, order. Like, the other show go being the go-home versus this one being the go-home probably would have made more sense. But you live and learn. And we start the show. Half because I'm only booking, like, I'm only booking matches four through seven of the card. And I'm trying to see what the AI rivalries will look like. And they have to essentially start the show because I delete all the other matches around them. And I can't reorder the matches once I book. So it's very rivalry heavy at the front. We're about to be treated to our seventh Nicki Minaj and Billie Eilish singles match in a series of seven. So far, so far, Billie Eilish is up six to nothing in that best of seven. <laughs> Looking to make it a clean sweep before the pay-per-view. As we are spit out of the trebuchet wormhole, the GWA Arena has deposited us here in beautiful, sunny, luxurious, newly renovated, freshly cleaned, minty flavored uh, card of whales. There we go. <laughs> Hard to vamp. I like that it shows all the sections that I have to close off to put my set. All right, in Cardiff. What a show we have for you tonight. Cardiff. Andrews is off. Hostilities on. As Mr. Rogers faces Doctor Strange in what is deemed a rivalry match. We'll see what that means when we get down to the ring. Since this doesn't involve any of the ladies' men, I'm hoping it's all it's super story heavy. Like they just beat him down before the match even starts. Anything that's like not just a straight contest. We'll see. Yeah, I made, uh, yes, I made the arena myself. Um, I've made championship belts. Uh, I made So I made the weekly arena for our weekly show, and then I also did six pay-per-views. So I did six pay-per-view arenas as well. Yes, sir. Or ma'am. Yes, poison. And the uh, GWA logo that flies around and stuff. Yeah, I had a lot of fun making stuff. Oh, hang on. Oh, they're joined on commentary by someone involved in the feud. And here comes Michael Myers. Got it. Okay, so they'll get involved, I presume? Where are they going to sit? There's no room at that table. Oh. Do they sit in that weird chair? In the corner? Go sit in the corner and think about what you've done. I wouldn't call this joining them at commentary, but okay. They might as well be sitting on the steps. That's hilarious. Yeah, so we ended up making, I, I guess, seven uh, arenas. Like this television one for the GWA Trebuchet show. And then, uh, and then the six pay-per-views, like I said. So that, plus the logo, which is essentially just text, and then all of the pay-per-view logos and the apron graphics, all that stuff. I made all that. It was fun. I like doing that. I love games where I can invest myself and customize and, you know, not necessarily find the fun, but use the tools available to custom, you know, to create. I like games that let me create within their framework. Like we had a lot of cuts and match types. Obviously all of these are created wrestlers, etc., etc. Yeah, it's going to be yeah, really quiet joining them on commentary. Like normally you wouldn't think he would have anything to say, but it would be a lot funnier if he was at the commentary desk with a headset on not saying anything than over in that chair. Just for being Michael Myers and stuff, right? It'd be hilarious. They just cut to him at the desk every once in a while. He's just staring straight ahead. Headset on over his mask. Is that a thing? I didn't even know that was possible. I don't know because they just shut down the 2K22 servers. So unless that's a thing I can do independently, like on the, um, on the website or something like that, Maybe that's, that sounds like a website thing, eh? You could just do that and they would just adjust your rosters. But I am invested, I am interested in getting 2K24. Like, I don't quite have the means to buy the yearly iterations of the WWE franchise, but I can use, I can swing like every other year. So yeah, I'm gonna try to get 20, 2K24 when it's new, so I can be amongst the first to stream, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas normally I wait until it's on sale. But I haven't really done too much adjusting of the actual, like, in-game universe in terms of, like, making the champions accurate or making the accurate factions in the WWE, etc., etc. 
I more use the games to, like, add other stuff. Well, not, that's not true, because I also do GM mode. And GM mode, I stick to the the in-game characters, because I think that a lot. Oh, cool. Yeah, because I know you can do things across 22 and 23, like, in terms of, like, uploading graphics and stuff. It was essentially the same servers. Hang on, big pile driver from Rogers. That's usually how he puts people away. Maneuvering strange away from the ropes here. Where he goes deep into a leg hook for that cover. Referee in position here. One, two. Whoa, Steven Strange has a little bit of fight left. Rogers can't believe it. Thought he had an early night tonight. Oh, good. Special guest referee should be great. Have you heard, and I was asking about this earlier, have you heard if Create a Story is going to come back? Because rather than AI feuds, I would rather just book, book the segments. You know what I mean? Like, I would have rather have booked the guest commentary thing or a pre-match beatdown, et cetera, et cetera, in universe mode than just have it sort of occur seemingly randomly. I assume if you're playing on PC, you could already mod the game and pick whatever, like, cutscene you want. But I was hoping they would just, like, put it back in the game proper. There's always hope. There's always hope. I appreciate that point of view. Like, no one ever thought we'd see GM mode again. And then, uh, thanks to the efforts of, like, stuff like Battle of the Brands, Boy, oh boy, boy is it ever back. And better than ever. Five. Myers doesn't even care. <laughs> He's just thinking about other things, rocking back and forth slowly. Does he think he was hired as security for this match? As we are up to seven. GWA, the land of the countouts these last couple of weeks. Oh, Dr. Strange is going to refresh at eight. eight. All right, Rogers back in. Dr. Strange. Taking too much of a moment to soak in the adulation of the fans. Rogers making him pay. Special guest ref would be great. And the more they can develop, like I'm fine if they leave GM mode exactly as it looks to be in 2K23, because I would love to get my hands on something that complex. But if they keep it the same or add a few more things to the 2K24 version, I'm going to be very, very happy. It was a, to me, a bright spot of, of the, certainly 2K22. Rogers, daring Doctor Strange to stand. Fist drop off the top, but Doctor Strange evades. Oh, stiff kick in the spine of Fred Rogers. Reactive Pele kick there from Strange. Sorcerer Supreme up top. Oh, double stop in the chest of Rogers. Into the cover goes Doc Strange. Two. Almost a huge upset there. Doctor Strange would have had a case for his team, Team Supreme, joining the ladder match had he defeated one half of the tag champs, but he gets spiked with the DDT. One, two. Out again at two. Rogers can't believe it. Word of the day is apoplectic. Going up top once again. Perhaps another fist drop. Nope, thinks better of it. Stalking his prey. Got to be thinking pile driver. Here it comes. Spikes him on top of his head. Into the cover. One, two, three. Mr. Rogers, one half of your tag team champions, the public beatdown squad, with the singles victory over Doctor Strange. Oh, hang on. Oh, look out. Who could have seen this coming? Oh, no. No, please. No, please stop. How dare. Whoa. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Doctor Strange vertically floated into the ring. Help him! Help him, Strange! Help him! Uh, Strange is AI controlled. They could literally attack either of these people if they wanted to. They're just standing in the way. Doc Strange. Steven Strange, do something. Help this man. Do anything. As Michael Myers continues to unload on Fred Rogers. Steven Strange just watches. 
Get shoved aside. Oh, what a counter. I mean, the referees wash his hands of this. He's outside the ring. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, what a counter. Into the power slam by Rogers. Countering the Asai DDT it looked like Myers was going for. Man, are things ever heated. This, of course, will come to a head at the Love Hurts pay-per-view. Two of these teams will be involved in that ladder match for the belt. All right, crowd shot means it's over. Yay. They are thoroughly entertained. What, are you going to stunt on him? He was kicking your butt. That's weird. <laughs> Myers with the final word. <laughs> but what does Stephen Strange think of it all? Probably nothing. Probably nothing. Okay, here we go again. Billy Eilish, Nicki Minaj. Billy is a perfect 6-0 against Nikki. Nikki is desperate for any sort of victory against Billy. Maybe I'll do that. Okay, Billy. Okay. Sorry, I'm also booking the pay-per-view while I do the go-home show. It's nice to book things in advance. I mean, half of it I already had booked, and I'm filling out the rest of the card. The title matches are easy. You pick a contender and go backwards and hope it works out that way. <laughs> These ones are a little tougher. Oh. There, Mickey Minaj should just quit while she's ahead. She's got the first offensive maneuver in. Two moves in a row. She's on a streak. I would just pack it in. As it's not even taxing to Billie Eilish to be defeating Nicki Minaj as she has. She just repeatedly goes back to the arms and eventually taps her out as she's already started to work on the arms. As we said, she's up in the best of seven series, six to nothing. Looking to pay, make it a perfect seven to no. But hey, please enjoy the last week of auto booked feuds because this is our last week of the experiment. It, well, I don't know if it's well. We'll see again. We'll see what they auto book for the pay per view versus what I, I like work around, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I would hope they're smart enough to be like, oh, pay per view event means blow off to feud, and then book like it ne doesn't necessarily need to be a gimmick match, but like book something. Billie Eilish hesitant there to go for the pin. I don't know why she would want to prolong this. Minaj has been a thorn in her side for seven weeks now. Preventing Nicki Minaj from advancing up the ladder. She seems destined to forever grapple with Nicki Minaj at this point. Despite thoroughly defeating her in every single one of their previous contests. Nicki hoping for that one upset. One upset that justifies the entire feud. Nice turning belly to belly by Minaj. Oh, excuse me, on Minaj by Eilish. Off the Brett's rope for that knee drop. Oh! And a guillotine off the top. Looking to pin Minaj. Yeah, I know I can put people in a rivalry into a match, like I could independently book it. So we'll see if they do the right thing and make some nice gimmick matches to try to blow these things up at the pay-per-view and I just need to like sign off on them or if they ignore them. Loser leaves town. Ooh, that's cool. I mean, I had an unofficial one of those at the last pay-per-view where I just replaced the person on the roster. Oh, that's neat. More of that in GM mode as well if, they could, if they'd be so kind. There's nothing I love more, and I've only played the, the 2K22 and seen the 2K23, but so far, my ideal sweet spot for this game is, is the GM mode, where I get to book a card, uh, justify why I'm booking it. Hang on! Ooh, a two count for Nicki Minaj again. Tell your children about it. Getting closer and closer to beating Billy. 
Um, but my ideal is like getting to book the GM show, getting to see the progress of like gaining fans, gaining and losing money, et cetera, et cetera. And then watching the matches and commenting on them like they're a real show like I'm doing here. That to me is the best of both worlds. I gotta simulate, or I gotta like, yeah, I gotta simulate stuff and then I gotta watch it and I gotta comment so I can do that part. I gotta participate, I, I'm doing the booking and then there's like a, there's stakes. So I'm trying to build towards events and stuff. Universe mode is fun, but there's, it's just like, I'm just doing it to do it. Like I'm doing a year of universe mode to do a year of universe mode. There's no real end game. I could just do this in perpetuity. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just my first, uh, my first foray into either of this. Yes, I am uh, I'm playing on Xbox Series X. So yes, I'm using an Xbox controller. Why, are you about to tell me something cool? Like there's like camera angles or something? I know when I'm uh, doing just regular one-on-ones, there are different camera controls, which is kind of fun. But I haven't found those in the different modes yet. I guess they just turned them off. Hang on, Billie Eilish, looking for that tap out that she's gotten so often before against Nicki Minaj. Minaj is looking to perhaps survive this first one. Eilish, let's go with the arm ringer. Or the arm bar, excuse me. And we're right back to work on the other arm. Relentless is Nikki. And she again ascends to the top. Again. Oh! Guillotine leg drop lets her think about it for a second, too. After she hits it. Once again into the cover. Once again into the victory. Goes Billie Eilish. 7 0 against Nicki Minaj. What a rivalry! Rogers took out care of Doc Strange. When you go to edit matches, go to a rival match and press in R3. Oh, buddy. Cool. I love learning new stuff. I'm just deep into my playthrough. That's not, I mean, that might have sounded facetious, but I'm, I'm genuine. Thank you so much for sharing. Go to a rival match and press R3. You can do, like, you can... Here is your winner, Does that mean there are Billy activities, like, I can just Ellis. tell it to, to, like, make this the end of the rivalry? Cause that would be dope. Oh, cool. Okay, I'm gonna check that out uh, for the pay-per-view. Like if it shows us a rivalry, I'm gonna bring up the rivalry action menu on cam here, like on stream, so we can all take a look together. Awesome. Yeah, I've been I've been playing this game for, you know, over a year, and I had no idea that was the thing. Cool. Speaking of rivalry matches, here's our third of the three for today. Gamora versus the Bride, where Nebula is in the Bride's Corner. Oh, I could do it right then? Dang it. Shucks. Shucks. Unfortunately, you can't back out of this screen. All right, well, I will save it for the when it autobooks something for the pay-per-view. Thank you for letting me know. I was tempted to try it there, but I was like, nah, he said, or they said, excuse me. They said uh, when you're editing. Fair enough. Thanks for the tip. I'm excited. We're gonna check that out. Remind me before I uh, log out, because it's good. I'm gonna auto, like obviously I'm gonna advance to the pay-per-view, but then when it's once it starts the rivalry thing, we'll, uh, or sorry, once it shows me the rivalry matches, I'll bring up that menu and see what's up. That's so neat. I didn't know it was more interactive like that. Like, that changes my perspective then. Because I just assumed I just had to let them run their course naturally, which is why I'm doing this whole thing where I'm letting them book the three the, the three rivalries that I've sort of generated, or that I've activated, basically. There was a fourth rivalry with Superman and Lex Luthor. That's my, like, main title rivalry. But the way I've been booking that sort of off and on kind of cancels it. Like, I didn't do it a week in a row or something like that. Or I didn't do it for a week, and so it just sort of disappears. So that's not technically a rivalry. I also haven't noticed that it makes much of a difference beyond adding a little bit of story. Not that that's a problem, because that's like sort of what I'm after. I'm just curious to see what. So if I bring up the rivalry menu, can I also just pick? We vary depending on what level it's at. Okay, that's cool. That makes sense. Like if it's just starting, you don't want to blow it off right away. 
So there is a way that I can sort of pick some of the scenes. Like, would one of the options in the rivalry action menu been to have somebody assigned as guest commentator? Mind blown. These hidden rivalry things. Man, this game's like three games at once. There's so much stuff in these WWE games now. I keep saying this to my friends. Like, it's there's so much in them. They, they could be like three games, but they jam it all into one. It's, it's incredible. Honestly, and I don't know if this is silly of me to say, but I think their video game franchise is the best thing that the company produces. Like, across all of their TV, their PLEs, merchandise, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. As a wrestling fan overall, their video game is an absolute just godsend. Like I can't believe what you can do with this. It's like a wrestling playground in so many ways. Oh look at all this! I love it! Referee down! Wait, she was in the corner of the bride, and then she turned on the bride, and then she's walking back to the corner of the bride? But the ref's out. Oh my gosh, this is cool. Oh, that ref looks messed up. Somebody, I think he dislocated his spine. Could someone, could someone help him? I don't think he should be able to bend like a lizard like that. Oh, crowd not happy with any of this. Natural selection of the bride. She lands on top of the ref, still down. No one there to make a count. Certainly a visual fall for Gamora. She's well into a count of 10, but no ref to make the call. I guess he's got to stand up under his own power. Oh, the big knee. Okay, so there's, a, there's still a random element. You choose an action. To, then it can happen, but it chooses wh whose action will play. Oh, okay. That's very interesting. I didn't know that was an option. See, I watch, um, I watch a bit of Gore and Perkins, and I just assumed they were playing on PC and had, like, mods or something, so that any time they were doing stuff that added a bit of story or rivalry or whatever, they were just choosing that, um... Not through nefarious means, but through means that I couldn't access because I just have a console version. But now I'm hearing about this whole rivalry action menu. Hot diggity. I don't know, the ref is not well. No, I, I don't know if the ref is ever going to get back up. They were wiped out and have not moved. I might have to take over one of the characters and get them to pull the ref back to their feet. In fact, let me do that right now. So, this is going to ruin the quote-unquote star rating of the match, I think. But I'm going to control assign myself to Gamora really quick. And... I don't care about the rating. That doesn't matter. That shouldn't ruin anything else. Uh, I, I don't know why they... They don't really display the match rating unless it's a rivalry thing, so I don't even know why they bother in universe mode. Because, like, it's not, it doesn't come up. If they showed me at the end of every show and or match, like, oh, hey, this is how they thought, that would be a, kind of okay, but that's also what GM mode's for. Whatever. Anyway. Oh, I'm going so slow. There we go. That's all I needed. Okay. Back to fight! Oh, she misses! I just had to bump the ref to get him up. Ref getting rid of this chair. This is supposedly a standard matchup. No disqualifications, etc. How you doing there, buddy? Got your brain scrambled. Doing okay? Blink twice for yes, ref. Blink at all. This fight has started heated and just got worse from there. Kick by the bride. Taking Gamora's face off. Can't quite secure the victory yet. Oh, missing the Superman punch. More making her pay. Natural selection. Got her. Into the cover. 
One, two, two. Three. oh no! The bride just gets the shoulder up at 2.99. Neckbreaker out of the corner. Bright spike in the back of her head. Amora feeling it. Oh, hang on. What a counter from the bride. Those long legs and that striking ability coming to a play here. Look at her go. What a combination. Amora sent back into the corner. But again, the long legs of the bride, that one leg was under the bottom rope and so broke the pin attempt. Now Gamora's got to waste time dragging her into the center of the ring. That's the time the bride can use to recover. Oh, hang on. Looking for the infinity lock. She's gonna bridge up into what might be a figure eight. Got that infinity symbol locked in. Bride's got the tap. Gamora with the victory. A measure of revenge for one half of the women's tag team champions. For losing last week. Things will be settled hopefully in a one on or a two on two match Here between Brutal Strength and Black Order Gang. for the belts. More A! Gang More A. All right, those are rivalry matches for the day. It's so fun. Next. Or exit. Exit foist. That's where we have a debut. <laughs> Take on Mahatma Gandhi. Please welcome the debuting Dick Dick Van Dick. Pride of Kanikama Nisei. Known as Ultimate Muscle here in the States. Dick Dick Van Dick would be Gazelle Man if this were his Japanese counterpart. But we're happy to have Dick Dick with us. You're back and just in time for the start of our next contest. Mahatma Gandhi in one corner. Dick, Dick, Van Dick, and the other. Fresh from the screens of Ultimate Muscle. Uh, Gamora managed to beat the Bride in the last match, if we were away for the finish of that one. So tag, women's tag team champs getting a measure of revenge on the challengers ahead of the tag team title fight at the pay-per-view next week. Currently in the ring, Dick Dick Van Dick in the full body suit. That's Mahatma Gandhi in. Is it like natural cotton? What do you think this stuff's made out of? The modestly attired Mahatma Gandhi with the flying springboard DDT. Nicely done. Into the camel clutch rope break, however. Dick, Dick, looking to make a good impression in front of the GWA faithful for the first time. Hot Magandhi would love to spoil the debut. And pick up an all-important win in the men's division. GWA competition, oh! Nice release German there from Dick, Dick. Now, from what I remember of the actual like ultimate muscle version of Gazelle Man slash Dick Dick Van Dick. He has like a knife edge chop as a finish, as one of his special moves at least. So I'm hoping that this uh, competitive fighter has something along those lines. I think I, like I think I do these things. I make these moveset edits. I don't remember doing them is the problem. And 
if I haven't, I at least have the idea to do so. So at least that's a perfect hole. Right? Right. Oh. The sandaled foot of Mahatma Gandhi in the face of Dick Dick Van Dick. And then another beautiful springboard DDT from Gandhi as he ascends to the top turnbuckle. Big splash on Dick Dick. Hooks the leg. Oh, I don't one. Gandhi unrelenting here. Has his opponent down center of the ring. Oh. Ends that combination with a slap to the face. A little insult to the injury here. Into the blue thunder center of the ring. Pulls him back to his feet. It's all Gandhi at the moment. Oh, Dick Dick. Duck the Haluva kick. Oh, things might get worse though. Dick Dick set up in the corner. Gandhi going for mountain punches. I thought he might be going for the long range. Haluva kick from corner to corner. Oh, right back to the attack goes Dick Dick. Succession of kicks to the chest of Gandhi. Oh, nearly took his head off with that last one. Drag him away from the ropes. Pulls him toward himself for the cover. Smartly done. Hooks the leg. Two. On the out at two. Dick Dick adjusts his antlers. Goes right back to work. for the pin on that one, but rolls him into the pin nonetheless does Gandhi. One, two, three! Mahatma Gandhi spoiling the debut of Dick Dick Van Dick with a blue thunder bomb. Oh, potential feud. This is gonna start. Is this going to start with sportsmanship and then end poorly? Hard to tell. The unreadable expression of Dick Dick Van Dick. Oh, nope, they just, okay. It just respectfully was like, yeah, you got me. I work here now, but you got me. Potential referee. That's fun. All right, no rivalry at play here. Just activity in the men's tag team division. Jules Winfield and Vincent Vega, the BAMFs, the badass MFers, take it on Rambo and the T-800, the Soldiers of Fortune. Soldiers of Fortune, our former tag team champs, would love the opportunity to be the third team in the ladder match at the pay-per-view. Still haven't decided and probably won't until I book the pay-per-view itself. Which team will be the third of three to join PBS and the ladies' men in that ladders match for the gold. All right, whatever this silly music is, we're just going to go skip to the next one. Perfect. Let's get loungy. Somehow fits. All right. Jules is ready. John Rambo is ready. We are underway. Nice suplex there by Rambo. Oh, now just stomping away at the chest. Certainly not holding back in the early going of this one. Oh! Tosses him into his own corner without daring him to tag in his partner. Now 
now suplexing him back into the corner of the Soldiers of Fortune. It has been all John Rambo so far in this contest. And normally when I say something like that, the other guy starts getting moves in. Observe. Rambo will cut him off once more. Sent into the corner of the Soldiers of Fortune now is Vincent Vega. Certainly the wrong part of town as far as he's concerned. Rambo just marches him across the ring, bounces him off the turnbuckle, throws him into the center. Absolutely having his way with Vincent Vega at the moment. Vinny trying to get back into this thing. Just gonna march Rambo over into the corner of the BAMFs. The BAMFs. Oh, a big knee strike in the corner. Rambo has been relentless in this contest so far. Finally attempting a cover. One, two, throw! Surprisingly close in the early going. Rambo thought that was it. He's going to tag out to the T-800. BD's going to dive and get Jules tagged in. Fresh fighters on either side. Jules looking to change the momentum in the favor of the BMFs. Rolls through into the cover. Doesn't hold. Perhaps too early. Oh! Thinks Jules Winfield. Here we see his partner Vinny starting to stir. The T-800 has had enough. Back in comes Rambo. Gets caught by an Emerald Frosian from Jules. Tries to hammer throw. The T-800 across the ring doesn't work. Instead, hits a vicious backdrop suplex. And then a huge body splash to Rambo. But he can't follow up for the pin right away. In fact, elects to attack the arm of Rambo instead of trying to secure the victory. Back in comes Mr. Vega. Setting up Rambo just so. Inverted spinning neck breaker. Into the cover. Two, three, the Bats win! A strong start to John Rambo, the Soldier of Fortune. But Vincent Vega really hanging in there. But the Bats are able to get back into the thing. Hang on! You guys won fair and square. There's no need for this. Uh, Boo Earns. Boo Earns, I say. Somebody get in there and stop this. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. Bamps making a statement after this victory. Disposing of the former tag team champions in our semi-main event, I think. No, close. Ooh, classical. We have another debut as Yolandi Visser and what fitting music as she is facing the ultra classy and always sassy Cruella Deville. Making her debut for the company. Last week, the chicken lady debuted. This week, Cruella Deville and Dick Dick Van Dick. The final roster changes for the GWA as we head into the home stretch that begins with next week's Love Hurts pay-per-view. And then uh, that begins the build towards the final season-ending uh, GWA pay-per-view Fever Pitch. Miles to go before we rest. And in our path, Yolandi Visser in the gold pants against Cruella Deville. 
Oh, a rivalry queue would be great. Being able to have more than four at a time would be amazing. Because, like, if I can have seven matches a show, why can't every single match be a rivalry match? Or most of them, you know? Because to me, a rivalry just means story. Like, it just it's just, ex like, more context for the match. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, the more of that, the merrier, you know? It's not like we're ever going to have, like, a sports presentation backstage interview option where you, like, get to sit, you know what I mean? Like, the sit-down interview thing. So if we're going to do, like, pro wrestling sports entertainment style stories, please give me as much access to them as possible. <laughs> Snap suplex from DeVille. I, I don't know exactly what her moveset's going to be or what her finish might be. Pretty good edit. Outfit spot on. Hair looks good. Complexion looking good. Considering you have like a cartoon to base it on. A couple of tall ladies joining the ranks in the past couple of weeks. Chicken lady at like 6'2", and Corella DeVille's got to be about six feet tall. Certainly larger than the diminutive Yolandi Visser. Oh, just got suplexed into the turnbuckles. Boy, there's definitely stuff they could add. Like, they're two iterations in, and they don't have tag team promos in GM mode yet. Like, you can't have a tag team call out a tag team, or have a tag team come out and put themselves over, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Which would be helpful for rivalries, for groups, and on and on. It might mess with things though, because like if if you just leave people in tag teams, that like is kind of a cheat to get two people over at the same time. So there might be like a weird tag team and like singles popularity stat. It might get strangely complicated. I don't know the inner workings. <laughs> I'm just on the other end of things as on the player side being like, well, this would be neat. We already had Dick Dick's debut spoiled by Mahatma Gandhi. Yolandi Visser looking to do the same to Cruella Deville here. In our semi-main event, still to come a big six woman tag, a big trios match. Featuring all six participants in the Women's Elimination Chamber match coming up at the Love Hurts pay-per-view. One woman putting the title on the line. Fisherman Buster hooks the leg on a follow-up cover does Cruella. Yolandi out at two. Cruella questioning the cadence of the referee's count. Oh God! What a suplex to Yolandi! Dropped her on her head! Go! No! I thought she got the win! Somehow, instinctively, Yolandi rolled that shoulder. Good gravy, what a suplex from Cruella. Living up to her name. Slingshot suplex. Into a neck breaker instead goes Yolandi. Thinks that's done it. Hooks the leg, one, two. DeVille once again able to kick out at two. Yolandi looking to follow up. Moss covered, three-handled family, Gradunza into the cover. Cruella rolls the shoulder at two. Yolandi can't believe it. We're gonna tap her out here. But unfortunately, the red high heels under the bottom rope. It's gonna break up that clutch immediately. Yolandi right back to the attack. Just bouncing Cruella's face off the canvas. Yolandi is her former longtime world women's champion with her tag team partner, Tank Girl. Looking to spoil the singles debut of Cruella DeVille here in the GWA. With a quick edge of Matic. Dropping an E now is Cruella, trying to get back into this thing. Snake Eyes in the corner for Visser.
Gruella's got to be thinking knockout shot. What does she have in her arsenal that she's going to use to put Yolandi down and out with? Hang on, deadlift. No, scoots out of the deadlift, German. Does Yolandi miss her? Looking to press her advantage here. Bust this match wide open, sending her to the floor. Yolandi slides out after her. Referee begins their count. Oh, suplex into their ap the apron. What a roll through by Cruella into that double stomp. Now sliding back into the ring. Oh, no, trying to reset the count is Cruella. The fight continues on the floor. Yolani with the advantage. Oh, body slams her against the ring frame. Spine first against the steel. Yolani Visser stomping away outside the ring. Anything to get the advantage. in the back of her head off the floor of the arena is Yolandi. Sure, there are some protective mats, but they're mostly for aesthetics than anything else. It's still bare concrete underneath that thin mat. Corella out on her feet at eight. Oh, but Yolandi slides out of the ring to reset the count once again. Oh, backdrop suplex on the floor. Corella in a world of hurt. Yolandi has taken over this match in a big, bad way. Now biting the hands of Corella. Oh, off the step she goes. Count continues as we slowly start to tread deeper and deeper waters. Yolandi again resets the count. In her element on the floor. Action continuing on the floor. Both women now making full use of the count and their ability to reset it. So looks like we're fighting corner to corner here. As the twin Austin fans in the front row look on. Oh, triplets. There's the other one to the side there. Yolandi taking a bit of a breather and allowing Cruella to return to the ring. Oh, there to meet her. With a headbutt to the stomach is Yolandi Visser. That's the big clothesline. Northern Lights. DeVille now. It's caught with a chin breaker. Yolandi looking to press that advantage that she gained on the floor. Snap suplex quickly to the cover goes Cruella. Oh, Yolandi out at two. DeVille thought she surprised her. Going up top. Double stop! The point of both heels into the chest of Visser. Oh, just a fence press now by Yolandi. Stalking her prey. Cruella in trouble. Once again with the Gradanza. Hooks the leg, center of the ring. Two, three, Yolandi Visser with a huge upset. Both debuts spoiled tonight. As we take a look at some of the action, and I take a break to take a drink. Yolandi Visser wrestling the match of her career against the much larger and stronger debuting Cruella DeVille.
but it was Yolandi Visser. Here is your winner, Yolandi with the Moss Cover three handled family Gradunza. Pick it up the victory. Which means it's now time for the main event of the stream. A six woman tag, Red Sonia, Ariana Grande, and the GWA Women's Champion Wonder Woman teaming up to take on Queen Elizabeth II, Mystique, and Laura Croft, all six participants in the Women's Elimination Chamber match for Wonder Woman's GWA, GWA World Women's Championship taking place next week at GWA Love Hurts. Our last bit of preview before that PPV is on the way. GWA Trio's rules apply. There are countouts, there are disqualifications. The only real custom match change that we made is we institute a IRL 15 minute time limit. So this does not take the rest of the afternoon as these matches sometimes can. Not as bad as like an eight, eight person, like a quad squad match. If it's not elimination can take ages. <laughs> Just because there's so much going on. And so many opportunities to cut off a submission or pinfall attempt. All right, there you see the 15 minutes in the top corner. Queenie starting things off for her squad. Ariana Grande for her is turning belly to belly by Grande to opening things off. What a salvo in the first 10 seconds. From the side of Grande, Sonia, and Wonder Woman. On the other side, Queenie, Mystique, and Laura Croft. Queen Elizabeth II representing Lady Boss, a faction that she is in with Beyonce, uh, Hela, Queen of Hell, and Oprah Winfrey. The remainder of the participants in this match unaffiliated. Of course, the other women's faction in our league is the bad guys, whose leader Billie Eilish has been beating down Nicki Minaj for ages. We just saw her teammate Yolandi Visser pick up a huge win against the debuting Cruella Deville, the other members of the bad guys. Tank Girl, the regular partner of Yolandi Visser, and Harley Quinn. As we see the world women's champion, Wonder Woman in there with the inaugural GWA Women's Champion, Mystique. As a proud champion for many months here before being unseated by Katy Perry. And Katy Perry was eventually defeated by Wonder Woman, our current champ. Set to put the belt on the line against everybody else in this matchup, friend and foe. In a six-woman elimination chamber match, headed your way on pay-per-view next week at 2 p.m. Eastern time as the GWA, the Gnarly Wrestling Isle, presents Love Hurts. Streaming live and for free, right here on the Twitch. It'll be a full, I believe it's a nine match card. Yes, it is a nine match card. All five GWA championships will be on the line. Main evented by a huge multiversal championship match as Lex Luthor is putting the belt on the line against the former champion Superman getting their mandatory rematch clause. So we are unclear as to the stipulations as of yet. Hopefully we'll have a little bit more information about that before the end of this broadcast. I'm sorry, oh, hang on. I'm being handed the envelope. Ah, okay, we finally heard back from the championship committee. Uh, we have the stipulations for the Superman Lex Luthor Championship match coming up at the pay-per-view. We already know the Women's Championship match will be defended in an elimination chamber featuring all the participants in this trio's match. Superman and Lex Luthor are going to face each other for the Multiversal Championship in the main event of Love Hurts. And what's being called... I'm sorry, what is this? <laughs> Love Scars. It's being called the Love Scars matchup. That can't be right. It is a 30-minute Iron Man Hell in a Cell. Dear Lord, that is a legit 30-minute Iron Man Hell in a Cell match headlining next week's pay-per-view between Superman and Lex Luthor. We're going to have our health trackers up for that one. Hang on, as Wonder Woman looking to put away Laura Croft. 
the latest entry into the chamber match. Queenie in for the save. So we finally know the stipulation. Superman and Lex Luthor meeting in a half-hour Hell in a Cell Iron Man matchup. That is going to get violent. As we headline our Love Hurts pay-per-view. I don't, I don't remember what I called it. <laughs> I do have a custom match type saved. I can't remember what it's called. If the pay-per-view in and of itself is called Love Hurts, it's definitely something related to the, the pain of romance. Or some such. So we have the women's, elimina women's Elimination Chamber. The men's main belt, the multimedia, excuse me, the Multiversal Championship will be held up in a Hell in a Cell 30-minute Iron Man between Superman and Lex Luthor. Uh, we have a Four Corners match for the Multimedia Championship. That's going to see Gordon Ramsay look to get the belt back from Nicolas Cage. We don't know the other two competitors yet, nor do we know if there are any additional stipulations beyond it being a Four Corners matchup. Uh, we know that the men's tag team title will be on the line in a three-way ladders match featuring the ladies' men and the champions, the public beatdown squad. Third team to be determined. Uh, we'll see when the pay-per-view rocks and rolls. And we also know the fifth belt, uh, excuse me, we also know the fifth belt on the line, yeah, is the women's tag team match as unbridled strength is finally going to get their tag team title shot against the champions' black order. In addition to that, I believe we've signed a match between Billie Eilish and Nicki Minaj to hopefully end their feud. The tag team feud should be resolved with the two title matches. Uh, you know, fingers crossed. And beyond that, we got a couple other things we still have to sort of pencil in. Got a lot going on on the Love Hurts pay-per-view. Like we said, all five belts on the line. We're finally going to end the, uh, the storied Billie Eilish-Nicki Minaj feud. And what a nail-biter it's been. Seven straight singles victories for Billie Eilish. We'll see what happens at the pay-per-view. As the clock continues to tick down in this, it could still end in a count-out, disqualification, pinfall, or submission at any time, but should one not be reached, we have a 15-minute time limit, so this thing doesn't get too out of hand. We are presenting the last trebuchet before Love Hurts. Headed your way next week. Referee getting into the deep waters of the count here. Getting up to seven. Croft and Red Sonia not letting up at all. Ooh, very generous on the time between the six and the seven. There's Laura. We're going to stunt for the crowd a little bit. Before the count of eight, Red Sonia returns to the ring. Fight continues legally. We're about halfway through this matchup. Laura Croft in the corner of Sonia Grande and Woman <laughs> for Wonder. Oh! Laura Croft catching the champ unawares. Sonia had tagged in Ariana Grande, but Laura Croft turned her attention to one woman there, caught her napping, knocked her off the apron. She's still down. Oh, starting, starting to move now. Any damage you can inflict upon the champion, probably in your best interest going into that chamber match at the pay-per-view. Small package driver by Grande. Two. Mystique comes in to make the save. Queenie didn't move a muscle. Queen Elizabeth II preserving her energy. An opportune time for all six competitors to get a look at the others in this one. Ariana Grande going for that Ariana armbar. Laura Croft able to counter out. Perhaps hit that elevator that she used to qualify the cha for the chamber in the first place. Just wailing away, hammer fisting down on Grande is Croft. Yeah, to seven minutes left. Be done in seven minutes or less. Queenie says less. 
Oh, hang on! She was going Canadian backbreaker. Grande turned it into a DDT. Queenie was going to pay tribute to the Commonwealth there with that Canadian backbreaker. But Ariana Grande able to turn it into a DDT and now into the trailer hitch. That perpendicular figure four variation popularized by Jamie Noble Boy. Into the cover goes Grande. Croft with the save, diving across the ring with that double axe handle. A casket. Now, was that in reference to like the current game or the older games? Because I'm sure there's new Undertaker content all the time. Or perhaps the return of the casket match. Is that what you're getting at? Oh. I mean, if it would be kind of funny if they posted a casket in reference to the 2K22 servers being, like the online functionality being shut down. But that would be a little mean. If they're just posting a casket to perhaps mean that the, that the casket match, match is going to return in 24, that's kind of fun. Yeah, that's kind of neat. You'd think they would have timed it to come back when they did that, like, here's the entire career of The Undertaker uh, game mode. But whatever, sometimes these things don't line up. Nice. Oh, they posted a ref shirt for the guest ref thing. Now they're posting a casket for the casket match. It would be fun if they did hair versus hair. Ariana Grande sent to the stratosphere there by Mystique, but able to kick out. Hair versus hair would be fun if it then made a copy of the, of the wrestler and created an appearance with them where they were then like had a crew cut. You know what I mean? Like that would be kind of neat. Less than five minutes remaining in this one. All action in this trio's matches. Hang on. Mystique looking to pick up a win. Wonder Woman with the save. Obviously, Pride on the line. You want your, that winner's share of the purse. And there is a rumor going around that the winning team of this uh, in this matchup, all three members will be in pods at the start of the Elimination Chamber meaning that only one member of the losing team will be in a pod and the other two must start the match. I think I can probably book that properly when I set the match up. So let's go with that as a, as a real stipulation now on the fly. Winning team are definitely in pods. Losing team, two of them have to start and the other one gets the remaining pod. And I'll tell you right away, if one of team loses, as champion, she'll get the remaining pod, and then Sonia and Grande would start us off. But it's kind of wide open if uh, if Wonder Woman's team wins, because then it could be anybody in the fourth pod on the other side of things. Just to be totally transparent. Sometimes I like to surprise the audience. Sometimes I like to let you guys in. Most of the time, honestly, I like to let you guys in, because then you're it's more interactive and you get to know why I'm doing the things I'm doing rather than just seeing me do them, you know? Show your work, that sort of thing. Everything I didn't do during math class growing up that the teachers used to hate me for. Show your work. Why do I need to show my work if I get the right answer? It's math. Rolls through into the deadlift powerbomb by Wonder Woman on Queen Elizabeth II. Into a follow-up powerbomb, flips her over, knee strike to the face. What a combo by Wonder Woman, your current world's champion in the women's division of the gnarly wrestling aisle. The six incredible athletes in this very contest, indicative of the type of competition you will see up and down the GWA roster, contending for all belts. An absolutely stacked present. We, have, we actually have enough people to do two weekly shows. Uh, like if we were a real wrestling company, it would behoove us to have two primetime shows of two hours each and probably do a soft roster split as well to get everybody on. Uh, in future scenarios, I will have less than 100 people on the roster for sure. Probably half that amount. Because even then, people get lost in the shuffle. 
year it's hard to remember to get everybody featured every now and again. Up and Plancer! The pits of Tartarus by Wonder Woman! And Laura Croft saves the match once again. Less than 90 seconds to go now. Wonder Woman trying to put this trio's matchup away. In this, the main event of the final trebuchet before Love Hurts. Coming away live on pay-per-view, quote unquote. Next week at 2 p.m. Same streaming time, same streaming channel. Oh, there, the Canadian backbreaker by Queenie. Trying to make Wonder Woman tap. Queen Elizabeth II has got her up. But Wonder Woman able to fight free. Less than a minute to go. Slightly sloppy, but a blue thunder bomb nonetheless. Queenie's got to desperately tag in Mystique. Tag on the other side, and with 30 seconds to go, it's Mystique and Red Sonia. The two redheads in the match. Face to face. Desperately running out of time. 20 seconds to go. Inverted DDT. 15 to go. Tags back into Wonder Woman. Less than 10 seconds on the clock. Gotta happen now if it's gonna happen. Five, four, three, two. We've got a draw. Oh, what a parting shot from Wonder Woman. Is this the, the action? Too big to contain to this trio's match. We'll see it come to a head at the Elimination Chamber at Love Hurts. There, we did it. I would not like to exit prepare for the next show. I would like to do this and then continue and then back it up and then go here and then go to our calendar and go to Love Hurts. Yes, please. Our February pay-per-view. Okay, I'm going to take a look at the pre-booked matches because I am desperate to see this fun rivalry uh, action menu I've heard so much about. So I'm going to edit matches. Um, oh, look at that. I put him in a cage. That's at least something. Let's see what it auto books for us. Don't pay attention to too much of this because it's going to go away. Why? Why are they in a rivalry match and they're not even facing the people? Why are they putting the belts on the line against somebody else unless the other team's get involved. Why did they spread it out here? There's another rivalry. Anyway. Okay. Okay, so I'm I'm clicking R3. Is that not... I'm clicking all the sticks. That was the instruction, right? Let me scroll up here in the text. In the text. Okay, so when you're editing matches, go to a rivalry match and press in R3. The rivalry action menu will pop up. It's not doing it. Well, that's a bummer. Well, it's not doing it. Click, click, click. Click, 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 click. Weirdo. All right. Maybe I'll do a little recon on that then. Okay, so we have the very basis of Love Hurts. Uh, we will book that and run that next week. That is going to do it for this week. And I would like to thank everybody for watching, no matter where or when you happen to be. Wishing everybody out there chill vibes and clear skies. And if you happen to find yourself in possession of a plethora of positive energy, please share it if you can spare it. And don't forget about your old pal, the Silent G, Rad Gnarly, saying so long for now. Special shout out to Rasco and Tracer PI for hanging out in the chat today. Nice to see both of y'all. Hope you're having a great day. That is going to do it for me. I am going to be back next Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time to continue our journeys with <laughs> with Herb Langley as we uh, head to the stars in Starfield. Oh, it's only for the new one? That's fine. And that's cool that that's a feature going forward. And I again, I appreciate that bit of knowledge. It's good to know. I hope they kept it going because that's a that's a fantastic like that's.
probably all I really need. Oh, don't, don't, no need to apologize. That's just something more to look forward to when I get the next iteration of the game. Thanks for hanging out today. Appreciated you hanging out. Anyway, like we said, that's going to do it for me. Let's find somebody to spread a little love to on our way out of here. There we go. Let's go raid these peeps. Thanks very much for hanging out, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. I am back Monday afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern time for Starfield. Hope to see you then. If not, thanks for spending the time with me. You did. Ta-ta for now.